And away we go. It is the nightcap brought to you by Hail Mary Sports Bar right here on BearcatJournal.com. Go visit our friends at Hail Mary's in Chevy. They're on Harrison Avenue right in the Dora District there on the main strip. You can go from bar to bar with your drinks or why go anywhere when they have everything you need at Hail Mary's. 27 TVs, three outside facing, a nine screen video wall. There's not a bad seat in the house to view the big game. They subscribe to every sports package that DirecTV offers. They can stream all the games and all of the Cincinnati st- sports will always be on the main video wall. They do not have a kitchen, but they offer various food trucks on the weekends and randomly throughout the week. Brand new walk-in cooler, brand new draft lines. And not only do they pour the coldest beer around, they do so in 32.8 degree frosted glasses. Go see our friends at Hail Mary's. All right, Aaron. I, I was, uh, we have a, a group text for the, the Big 12 Insiders group on 24-7. Oh, and, they included you. And, uh, That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I've been included in that group for a while. I just um, I just mean last year when they excluded you from yeah. all the things. That's fine. I'm okay with it. That was more like the Big 12 itself. Uh, <laughs> not, not yet understanding that we're the biggest outlet in the market but that's neither here nor there um but they they we do a uh, a power ranking like a, a big 12 poll each week and uh i sent in today one through 16 how the hell do i know one through 16 one how the hell do i know two how the hell do i know three how the hell do i like i you're gonna get kicked out, you're gonna get out, kicked out again i did it but i joked that was like my uh, lighthearted moment of the week. Like, honestly, who the hell knows? And it is truly a week-to-week league because the things that happened last week don't make any sense this week, and the things that happened this week aren't going to make a damn bit of sense next week. Just wait until basketball season starts. But that all makes sense. I can make sense of that. <laughs> no, Much you just, more than this. You can just talk yourself into things. With basketball. No, I mean, there's usually a pecking order that is understandable in basketball. This football league, there's nothing that makes any sense. Not a damn thing. Let's, Let's get, discuss. Uh, and we'll I'm get there. Because I, I, I think some things did make sense. Arizona 23, Utah 10. <laughs> this one didn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, you had to know at some point not having Cam Rising was going to matter for Utah. Their defense is outstanding. Their offense is not a top t- that of a top 10 team when Cam Rising is not there. And it caught up to him last night. Yeah, and Tetai Aroa McMillan has come back to earth and is no longer the video game yeah, producing anomaly that we saw in week one. Uh, but oh no, Arizona. We we knew Arizona was was good. I, I wouldn't say great, but I would say that Arizona was good well, to start to start the season. Uh, Arizona, they're three and one. I, I mean, two and one going into this game. Uh, now three and one. So I'm, I'm not I'm not shocked at the outcome of this one. And to your point, yeah, when. when you don't have your superstar quarterback and you're relying on next guy up. Sometimes one's going to slip. Yeah. I mean, the thing with Arizona is there were a lot of people, if they didn't have a coaching change, I think most people would have picked them first in this league based off of what they did at the end of last year, the momentum that they had, the talent that they had, but then you add in a coaching change, you, you lose guys to the portal. You, you have, more instability, instability than than you normally would have if you kept your coach. They're obviously still very talented, and uh, the crazy thing, though, Aaron, if you look at it, the leading passer, Utah; the leading rusher, Utah; the leading wide receiver, Utah. And Arizona dominated that game. Like Arizona controlled that game pretty much throughout. The team that led in turnovers, Arizona. Yeah. So, you know, um, 
I said I mean, Arizona, they Arizona created, created created more turnovers, more turnovers. not yeah. not turn the ball over more. But right, right. Arizona's good and they're getting better, and they're probably going to be a problem if they're not a team that that sneaks into the conference championship. They just had a major say in it yesterday, and I don't think it's the last time they're going to have a major say, whether it's them or knocking somebody out as we go through the rest of the season. If Arizona has more than three losses at the end of the season, I'll be surprised. Yeah, they're they're really sound. They're really solid. Yeah. I mean, they may not they may not be great in any one specific area, but they're really good across the board. That's, that's and there's not a lot of that in this league. That's called bookending it. Iowa State 20, Houston. We have a problem. <laughs> they are scoreless through big two big 12 games. Eee. Not a good look. Not not great, Bob. Maybe they just struggle with the 3 3 5. <laughs> That's probably it. Uh, yeah. Probably it. Uh, 72 passing yards for Houston. Not good. 171 rushing yards. They did get that going. Averaged 5.7. But two interceptions. Again, Donovan Smith had one. Zeon Chris had the other one. Zeon, I thought they were I thought they were going to start. Did they start Zeon Chris and then go to Donovan Smith? I don't think so. I think Donovan Smith started, but I could be wrong. Eight of twelve for eight of twelve for seventy-one yards. Zion Chris one of four for one yard. Mate, when you got two quarterbacks, you have no quarterback. I mean, credit to Donovan Smith. He completed three quarters of his passes for seventy-one yards. But hey, seventy-five percent completion percentage—that's pretty good, right? Or no, thirty-three. 66.6% completion percentage. You, you got there. I got there. It took me a second. It's Sunday night. I'm tired. I'm saying. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's – I mean, I think right now you have to say Iowa State's the best team in the league, right? That's how I, who I voted number one. No. No? No. You don't have Iowa State number one? I don't. Oh, you don't have a vote, so. <laughs> uh, you know who's not number one, Aaron? Oklahoma State. Uh, Kansas State, 42. Oklahoma State, 20. Oklahoma State, I don't think it's good, Aaron. I, I, and Kansas State, again, if they can play with the lead, Avery Johnson is really good. If they don't play with the lead, I think they're in trouble. They played with the lead, and they dominated Kansas State. And that's a week after, you know, or they dominated Oklahoma State, and that's a week after BYU just mopped the floor with Kansas State. So Kansas State put up 550 yards plus of offense, 300 yards on 34 carries, three touchdowns on the ground. That's largely due in part to DJ Giddens, 15 carries in 187 yards. That's good. good. It's pretty Goodness. good. Um, but Avery, Avery Johnson, 19 to 31, 259 for three with three touchdowns and a pick. Uh, on the other side, though, Alan Bowman threw the ball 50 times and only completed half 26 of those 50 passes for 364 yards, one touchdown, two picks. Ollie Gordon, we they need to start putting his face on milk cartons around the Stillwater area because where are you, sir? Where Roadside are you? Billboards. Have you seen this man? Amber Alert, whatever it is that you do in Oklahoma, you got to find this dude. 15 carries, 76 yards. And I don't know if you got a chance to watch any of it. He just didn't. He, I, I don't feel like he was breaking anything. He wasn't breaking any tackles. He just, it was, it was weird. He just looked average at best. He's not. He's not creating any space, and he's not running to any space. Like, th there's no green grass. If Ollie Gordon was a horse, he would starve right now because there's no green grass anywhere in his general vicinity. 
He's in a, in a desert. Uh, he's in a desert looking for the oasis. No name. You ever been to the desert on a horse with no name? What are we just is that the theme of the night between the pre-show and, and where we at where we're at now? We are in all the 70s references. <laughs> you got me in that, like that's where my brain is. Good during yes. the pre-show meeting. So yeah. Uh I'm with I, you though. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, yeah, they're not good. And Gundy, that seat might be getting a little warm. I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, I, I I have to think worst case he finds his way to get to like five hundred four four a, and five a, five and four a bowl game. Yeah, and then I don't, maybe. Yeah, I mean, if 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 you're relying on Alan Bowman, it's only three more wins. But I don't know. I don't know who Oklahoma State. Do they have Houston on the schedule? Uh, we could take a look. They have they got, uh, they, they got they got Baylor, Arizona State, Texas Tech, BYU, Baylor, Arizona State, TCU, Texas Tech, Colorado. That's not murderers row. Well, you you skipped over West Virginia as well. I think they got three in yeah. there. I think they got three. Probably. In there. Still, things aren't going great. Uh, in Stillwater, BYU stays hot. They get out huge early. That's Baylor. Baylor tries to – I'm not ready for that yet. The only reason being they have – Aaron, I don't know if you've looked at their numbers. They have no run game at all. Like No, but, but they got hashtag, hashtag BYU, and it is going well out in the Mormon them, state. I put them two behind Iowa State. I don't um, know what the hell Vegas was thinking, giving Baylor, what, three and a half, I think, is what we had it. Yeah, we talked about on, that, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. It didn't matter that it wasn't at altitude. BYU won this game. I know the final score was 34-28. They were up by – I feel like they were up by 14 at one point, and then they just kind of let off the gas a little bit. It was 31-14 at halftime. Yeah, there you go. 17. You were up 17, and they let the, the foot off the gas. Yeah, I mean, it, it, more offensively. And I think that's where – them not having a run game, like they couldn't just, you know, chew clock and and <clears throat> try to protect their lead. So I think that can be a thing that is super damaging, especially in this league. If you can't run the ball, you're you're at a disadvantage most nights. Uh, I guess would be the right thing to say. But they have missed, and they're playing well, and that is a very confident group of. 26-year-old grown men. Moving up. Well, Dave Aranda's seat has to be the hottest right now in college conference? football. In the, in the conference, anyway. Two and three. College football. After a disappointing year last year where, I mean, we saw them here. They did not look. UC was bad. And Baylor looked equally as bad. UC should have won that game and found a way to right. shoot themselves in the foot, but I digress. Uh, so yeah, I, I Baylor is the story of the league so far this year. Five and 2 and zero in the league. Uh the uh, the loser leaves town match against TC or TCU in Kansas at Arrowhead Stadium. TCU thirty eight, Kansas twenty seven. Jalen Daniels was no. awful again. Not good. Hoover is really good. Like th that dude. I don't. I don't like much about TCU, but their quarterback can play. I would not say he's really good. I'm okay saying he's good. Uh, Twenty-eight to thirty-seven, three fifty-six, three touchdowns, two picks. You you got to stop turning the ball over. He still threw for. 300 plus and three touchdowns. He, like, he yes. I, again, I, I didn't I didn't say he's average. He's above average. He's good. I just don't think he's really good. I think he's been really good. I mean, his numbers are almost fairly identical to Brendan Soresby, and we think he's been really good. Well, he also didn't turn the ball over until the announcers were begging every god that they could name on a broadcast. So they could call the first Brendan Soresby. Right. I mean, just... 
I don't know how they still employ Rod Gilmore, but that's neither here nor there. Kansas in trouble, bro. One and four, zero oh and two in the Big Twelve. It ain't a good look right now. Everybody, no. and that's that's going to be the question: is it's not going to get any. Thought, everybody thought Lance Leopold was the architect of that thing. Turns out it might have been their offensive coordinator, who all of a sudden Penn State looks like they can run offense now because he's there. Huh. It's not going to get any easier for Kansas to win playing at Arrowhead because, we, as we have seen, playing at Temple, playing at uh, South Florida, when you're playing in an NFL stadium in front of co like college fans, it sucks the life out of uh, – that. those stadiums were not built for college games. Yes, I mean, Arrowhead is one of the loudest stadiums in the world. Sure. If Kansas was winning, it would be fine. But they're 1-4 and four and 0-2 and in the Big 12 in a pro market that is not going to care about Kansas football if they're not surprising you. You know what I mean? Like, Kansas has been bad for the entirety of the history of their football program. So they do not have this like fan base that has belief, right? They've beaten that out of them over a century. So they fall behind. Guess what? That town's just going to go, I don't, I don't care about Kansas football. The Chiefs play on Sunday. I don't, I don't know how much you, yeah. you, I don't know how much you read or caught any of the pressers on this one. Uh, but Lance Leopold, he did say that it starts with the head coach. He's not getting it done. He needs to be better. But then he took the gloves off and went straight at the referee crew. So I don't care if I get fined. And he apparently in the second half was just barking the entire time at one specific ref. Uh, I believe his name was uh, Michael Vanderveld. Uh, so what I've seen in the couple of games now in Big 12 is Big 12 officiating is kind of what we expected because all officiating is horrendous because God forbid we put any of these officials in a union and allow them to hone their craft. Instead, it's a part-time gig while they do real jobs in other places. Yeah. They show up for work on Friday and they leave immediately after the game Saturday. Right. Anywho. Uh, then finally... Something felt off with this. I did not expect this by any stretch of the imagination. But that line felt absurd. UCF by 15 and a half or whatever it was. I don't know what it was at kickoff. It was huge on Wednesday when we did this show. Yes. Colorado 48, UCF 21. Colorado did a phenomenal job slowing down UCF's rushing game. And when you take away the rushing attack from UCF, they are mid irrelevant, irrelevant. KJ Jefferson is, is not it. I mean, occasionally like every three games, you'll see him get hot for like 20 minutes. KJ Jefferson is on the DJ ukulele. I know that's not his name, but the DJ ukulele trajectory where you started here I saw a metric today, like success rate for Power 5 quarterbacks, and DJ Ukulele was last out of I, like 60. He got last. He's, he's no longer yeah. the starter. Well, but I mean, it's probably guys over so many snaps, which right. usually right. makes you, you know, unless you got benched in the last game. Um, what? I, Colorado is clearly – getting better this year under Dion than they did last year where they, they looked like they had life and then immediately uh, drove off the side of a cliff. This game was wild. I don't know if you watched it. I watched, I had it on, on and off before we left. I watched quite a bit of it. Um, some of the stuff that they didn't have on the telecast that I saw on social media thereafter, Cam Newton being a weirdo running after running around after Shador and Travis Hunter as they're going through their pregame like 
rituals and just getting ready for the game. He wanted to meet them. And he's like nagging at them and, and running around after that. It was weird. Um, I don't know if you saw the post-game celebration uh, where they had Rick Ross in the locker room with the DJ set. Um, <laughs> just getting down. Um, Colorado is a party. Wherever they go, whatever they do, uh, if they are winning, it is a party. I don't know what to make of any of it. I don't know. This isn't the same team that they were two, three weeks ago. Uh, two, three weeks ago, I didn't expect them to win more than they won last year. Their, um, their defense all... is looking much better. They're running the ball a little bit, at least more than nothing. Um, that they, that, you know, they couldn't run the ball at all at the beginning of the season. They couldn't stop anybody. So they're becoming more than just Shador and Travis Hunter. It yeah. feels like. I agree. Um, I am. I'm curious to see if it's sustainable. Uh, yeah. But winning, they have a we tough all, schedule. We've talked about it. Winning, winning does solve everything, though, as we know. Uh, four and one is they've already matched their win total from last year. Again, I didn't expect them two, three weeks ago to surpass four wins, and here we are. Yeah, more power to them. They're they're getting better, and the question is, is that a sign? of things to come the rest of the way for UCF? Or was that the Gus Stinker that is inevitable every year where they're favored by 15, 16 points and somebody kicks their ass? As, He's long, usually... as, as, long, as, as long as KJ is your quarterback, I don't know how to feel about the rest of the season. Yeah. It's, it's going to be fascinating. All right. BBP tomorrow night. We'll uh, we'll get into the details on what happened uh, yesterday in Lubbock. We'll see you next time. That's the nightcap brought to you by Hail Marys right here on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!